In our current project, I'm trying to cover the iconic moments, the 50 iconic moments that dot the landscape of baseball history. We started with the first one, 1941 World Series Game 4, Mickey Owens pass ball with two outs in the ninth inning on a strikeout that led to four Yankee runs and totally turned that game around for the Yankees. The second iconic moment we looked at was Ted Williams' 1941 All-Star Game walk-off home run. And now third, we're, we're looking at the 1912 World Series Game number eight, Fred Snodgrass's $30,000 error. This is Apple Baseball Classics, where yesterday's stars performed through cards and dice. Classic games on our tabletops. Hi everybody, this is Appa Brian and Appa Baseball Classics bringing to you game number 8 of the 1912 World Series, a series that showcased <clears throat> the superstar pitcher for the New York Giants, Christy Mathewson, against the fireballer of the Boston Red Sox, Smokey Joe Wood. This is one of only four World Series to go eight games. Uh, it was scheduled for seven, but the rules of the day if a game ended in a tie, it had to be replayed. The other three World Series, 1903, 1919, and 1921, were best of nine affairs. This was a best of seven series. Game two of the series ended in 11 innings, 6-6 six to six tie, uh, called because of darkness. So, game eight is a replay of that tie game. Uh, they had to flip a coin to see which field the game would be played at. It was played, it, it was won by Boston, so the Red Sox are playing their game in their new stadium, Fenway Park. All right, we've had the introductions. Ubedai has completed his warm up tosses. We're ready to begin. Let's play ball. Hugh Carpenter Bedayant from Gary, New York. Uh, it was 20 and 9 with a 2.92 ERA. He has a B rating. Y and Z modifier. We're using the hybrid game of uh, APA, except for uh, I'm not doing the math for the left-right splits. Everything else I'm doing hybrid. And uh, Josh DeVore steps in the box. Let's play ball. 55. Do DeVore is a sharp ground ball off the shortstop Honey Wagner's glove and rolls into left field for a base hit. DeVore is fast. Let's check his stolen base rating. B25. Good possibility he might be going. Larry Doyle is the batter. All right, but I, it's moved to first as zero, and Katie's throwing arm is zero. So 11 through 51, if he decides to steal, and he does. Here's the throw. 56. Katie guns him down, and we have the first out of the game. Heine Wagner applies the tag, a bit of redemption for not getting that ground ball, which was ruled a hit. Larry Doyle is the batter. 1-4 is a fly ball to left field. Duffy Lewis makes the catch. Two outs. Here is Fred Snodgrass. 24. Swing and a miss. 
strike three. And in this game that Fred Snodgrass would like to forget in real life, starts off with a strikeout. we the bottom of the first. No score of the Red Sox coming to bat. Okay, Kirstie Matheson is on the mound for the New York Giants. Features a screwball. Grade A pitcher, Y, modifier, ZZ, control. 23 and 12 in 1912 with a 2.12 ERA. Harry Hooper steps in the box. Here's the pitch to Hooper, 51. Nine. Swing and a miss. Strike him out with a nasty screwball. One down. Second baseman, Steve Yerkes. 6-3 is a fly ball to center field. Fred Snodgrass is under it and makes the catch. Two away. Here's Tris Speaker. Both teams, by the way, are fielding column two, but with the a hybrid game, we take more specifically the air ratings of the individual players. Pitch to Tris Speaker, a 383 hitter in 1912. 61 is a swing and a miss for strike three. Three up and three down for the Red Sox. We go to the top of the second, no score. All the previous games of the this World Series were sold out with over 30,000 at each game. But uh, yesterday's game had a controversy where the seats of the Royal Rooters were sold out on a first-come, first-served basis before the Rooters got their tickets. And they were upset. And they are boycotting this game. Hence, there are only 17,000 in the stands when there would be about 32,000. All right, Hugh Bedank gave up a single to the leadoff batter, but he was wiped out in a caught-stealing red party steps into the box for New York. 32 is a 26. Bouncing ball to second base. Yerkes has it, throws to first. One away. Fred Merkel. 6-6 six, six roll. That's going to be an extra base hit possibility. And 62 is a smash into the left center field gap. He will be, go to second base with a double. The Giants have the game's first runner in scoring position. He is fast. Buck Herzog's turn to bat. Buck Herzog was born in Maryland and attended Maryland Agricultural College, played shortstop there and was a teammate of the Philadelphia A's home run baker. Here's a pitch to Herzog, 32. A topper to second base. Jerks fields it. Only play is to first. Merkel goes to third. Now there's two outs. And that lead run is only 90 feet away. Here is Chief Myers, the catcher. A 358 hitter in 1912. We'll want to be careful here. Let's see what's after him. Fletcher, 282. He is going to walk Chief Myers. Four wide ones to the Giants catcher, and he takes first. And that brings up the Giants shortstop, Art Fletcher. First and third. Infield's playing back with two outs. He could walk Fletcher to pitch to Matthewson. And just walk the bases loaded. Uh, Matheson's not a horrible hitter. So we're going to go ahead and pitch the Fletcher. And I've dropped the dice here. Hang on. All right, here's the pitch. 1-3 is a 42. Well, that's a hit batter unless we die in his HBO 0. He is not. So Fletcher will take first. We're going to roll and see if there's going to be a brawl between these two highly charged teams. Doubles, there will be a brawl. No brawl. Arthur Fletcher's at first. Chief Myers at second. Fred Merkel at third. All the stations are full. Can Matty Matthewson put a quarter in the merry-go-round early in this game and maybe get a decision right here? Here's the pitch to Matheson. 51 is a 9. Line drive the opposite way over first base. Merkel scores. 
Myers scores, and Fletcher goes to third. Two RBIs for the pitcher. Christy Matthewson, Giants take a 2 to nothing lead. Have runners at first and third. Top of the order to Josh De DeVore, who is already one for one. Runners are first and third. There's two outs. There's the pitch to DeVore, 43. Ground ball right back to De Bedient. He's got it, throws the first. Three outs. But the New York Giants post two on the scoreboard. Giants two, Red Sox zero. Right at the bottom of the second inning, the Red Sox will have Duffy Lewis, Larry Gardner, and player manager Jake Stahl scheduled to hit. Here's a pitch to Lewis from Matthewson. 23 is a 27. That's a ground ball toward third base. Taken by Buck Herzog to throw to first. Lewis is retired. Larry Gardner, one of the better hitters, along with Trust Speaker on this team. 315 was his 1912 average. 53, 20. Little test second baseman Larry Doyle, and he misses it. Air on second baseman Doyle. Gardner goes to first. He's there with one out. Have 17 stealing. The seven, he's probably going to sit tight. Here's Jake Stahl. 301 hitter. 54 is a medium fly ball. Hit the other way. No problem. It's caught by the right fielder, Josh DeVore. Two outs. And now Heine Wagner. 43 is a roller back to Christy Matthewson. He's, or Y. There's a Y on that. So Y, and Matthewson's got a Y, so it's a strikeout. Third strikeout for Matthewson. It's the end of the second inning. We go to the top of the third. New York 2, Boston 0. Larry Doyle leads off the top of the third against Hubie Dyant. He was the recipient of the 1912 Chalmers Award. That was an automobile company that gave an award to the best player in each league. And Larry Doyle, with his 10 home runs and 330 batting average, was given the Chalmers Award for 1912. Here's the pitch to but Doyle, and there's a hit column roll for Laughing Larry. 46 is a two-base hit, a leadoff double for Larry Doyle. Giants brought their bats today. They lead the... They led the National League, I think, with 823 runs scored. They had the best offense in the National League. Better is Fred Snodgrass. Bedient goes into a stretch. Here's the pitch. Snodgrass is bunting. 36 is a 12 foul ball. Misses two attempts at the bunt, and he will swing away at this point with two strikes. 23 is a 33. A pop-up high on the infield. Shortstop Honey Wagner is under it and makes the catch. And Snodgrass's day is not going well. Failed to get the sacrifice down. Pops out. He struck out his first time up. Here is Red Murray. 26. That play result has a Y by it. And Bedient, like Matthewson, has a Y strikeout rating. So Murray is caught looking. Two outs. It's the first strikeout for Hugh Bedient. And now he just needs to get through Fred Merkel to survive the leadoff double. Merkel, 309 hitter with 11 homers. There's the pitch. 1-5 is an 11. That's a base hit to left field. And that will score Doyle. Fred Merkel is two for two. Now he's got an RBI and he's got his team up front three to nothing. Buck Herzog. Six five is popped into the air. The catcher throws away his mask. Katie makes the catch. Three outs. We go to the bottom of the third. Giants three and the Red Sox zero. These two teams come into today's contest tied at three games apiece. So, where they, this will win the World Series and be the champions of 1912. 
Matthew Sun has the eighth place hitter for the bottom of the third inning. Hit Caddy steps into the box. 45. Two balls and no strikes. Matty has a ZZ rating. 3-3 three, three roll. That's a zero. And a second column roll for Katie. 24 is a base. It's a double for a hit Katie. Let's see if the Red Sox can turn that around as the Giants did. Lead off double in the top of the third. Here's the pitcher. QB Giant. The Giants are expecting a bunt. So is the pitcher. 36 in the first. That's two balls that were fouled, so it should be two strikes on the hitter, Bedayant. He's going to continue to try and buy. 61 is a 36. Pass ball. Runner goes to third. One ball, two strikes on the pitcher, Bedayant. He's not bunting now. Infield is playing back. Here's the pitch from Matthewson. 53 is a 21. Testing the first baseman, Fred Merkel, who's feeling column one. He will record the out unassisted, but the runner is going to score. Give Bedayant an RBI, and the Red Sox are on the board. Base is clear, and Harry Hooker, the top of the order, steps into the box. 24. Swing and a miss, strike three, four strikeout for Christy Matthewson. Two away. And now the second baseman, Steven Yerkes. 34 is a fly ball to center field. Fred Snodgrass parks under it and makes the catch. We go to the top of the fourth. Gi Giants three and the Red Sox. One. Chief Myers, who has intentionally walked his first Play defense today will lead off for the Giants. 26 is a sharp grounder to Heine Wagner. He's got it. Throws the first. One away in the top of the fourth. Art Fletcher. 1-2 is a ground ball to second base. And Fletcher is out. Retired by Steven Yerkes. Two away. And now the pitcher, Christy Mathewson. 1-6 is a 28. That's also hit on the ground. A high typer toward Wagner. Throw first. Three outs. We go to the bottom of the fourth. 3-1 to one, New York. All right, Tress Speaker comes to the plate to lead off the bottom of the fourth for the Red Sox. He's one of my favorite all-time players, primarily because he is from the area of Texas that my father's family is from, and I used to go spend my summers there as a youth. Um, speaker was a quite the cowboy. He is not. He swings the bat from the left side, but he is not a natural left-hander. He was a natural right-hander, but severely broke his arm being thrown from a horse. So he taught himself how to swing the bat from the left side and throw the baseball from the left side. Here's the pitch to Tris Speaker. 63 is a fly ball to center field. Fred Sodgrass takes measure and picks it out of the sky. One away. Our fielder, Duffy Lewis. One six. High hopper towards shortstop, Art Fletcher. He has it. Makes the throw. Two outs. Here's Larry Gardner. Left-handed batter. One six is also a ground out. To the shortstop, Arthur Fletcher. Three up and three down for the Red Sox. Go to the top of the fifth. Giants three, Red Sox one. All right, five foot six outfielder Josh Devore leads off the fifth inning for the New York Giants. He is a very patient hitter, draws walks, and he is a speedy runner in the offseason in Fontenot, Indiana. He owns and operates a boxing gymnasium. Here's a pitch from Bedayan to Josh Devore. 41 he is a 28. That's a Ground out to Honey Wagner at shortstop. One away. Here's laughing Larry Doyle. One for two with a double and a run scored. 
23 is a 33. That has a Y modifier. Bedine's got it. So that's a strikeout looking. Two outs. Here is Fred Snodgrass. He's not having a great day so far. We can turn around here. 43 is a little roller back to the pitcher, Bedine. Throws the first. Three outs. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Giants still three and Red Sox one. All right, player manager Jake Stahl leads off for the Red Sox for the last of the fifth. They're down by two. One four is a fly ball to left field. Red Murray is under it and makes the catch. Here is Heine Wagner, the shortstop. 45 is two balls and no strikes. 26 is a swing and a miss, strike three. Matthewson fell behind the count, but rallied back to strike out Wagner. Two outs. Here's the catcher. Forrest Hick Katie, 61, is a roller to the shortstop. Arthur Fletcher throws out Katie easily, and we go to the top of the six. Christy Matthewson has the Red Sox by the throat. He's allowed only one hit and no walks. Giants three, Red Sox one. Well, fielder Red Murray leads off for New York. 1-4 is a fly ball to left. That's Duffy Lewis's territory, and he makes the catch. One away. Boston has a terrific outfield. They are all rated three in APA. Here is Fred Merkel. 23. That's a Y. Strikeout caught looking. Two outs. Third baseman Buck Herzog. And 53 is a 20. Testing uh, Larry Doyle at second base. Or excuse me, Stephen Yerkes at second base. He's a feeling column two. That's going to be an error. So both second basemen in this game have an error. Herzog's at first with two away. Chief Myers, leading hitter for the Giants. At, I think, at 358. I think he's got the highest average. 1-1 one, one roll, that's a hit column roll for Myers. This will probably add to the lead. 43 is a 11, just a single. But that sends Herzog to third. And basic app of Myers with that 11 could steal on the next pitch. But there's two outs first and third. I don't think he's going to be going here. Arthur Fletcher. All right, time is called, and Boston is going to make a change. Smokey Joe Wood will come into the game. He is a fireballer, A and B pitcher, X, Y, and Z modifier. In the actual game, he relieved three innings, and that's about where we are, where we are in this game. Two outs in the sixth. Smokey Joe Wood takes his warm-up tosses. Hubert Dyan is not responsible for the two runners on base. Uh, first, I reached by an error, so that should have ended the inning. So these are unearned runs if they score. Art Fletcher, the shortstop, is on the, is in the batter's box. First and third pitchers do the bat next, but Matthewson has, is one for two with two RBIs already. They're going to go ahead and pitch to Fletcher. Here's the pitch. 6-6 six, six roll. Now we'll do the second column roll. And 31 is a four. A high fly ball to left center field. It might be. It could be. It is off the top of the wall. Fletcher is going to go past second. Slides into third. Safe with a triple. And the Giants score two more runs. New York five. Boston one. As we said before, those runs are not earned, but... That doesn't matter to the Red Sox. I think in this game with Matheson, the way he's pitching, I think the horse is out of the barn. That brings up Christy Matheson. 35 is a 22. Round ball to Wagner at second base, or shortstop. He throws the first. Three outs. But the damage is done. New York hangs two more runs on that scoreboard, and they lead 5-1. to one. All right, Smokey Joe Wood is due to bat first. 
in the bottom of the sixth inning. He is a more than decent hitting pitcher. He's a good hitting pitcher. In fact, he finished his career in the outfield. I think with the Cleveland Indians. Here's a pitch to Smokey Joe Wood. 53 is a 21. That tests the first baseman, who is Fred Merkel, feeling column one. And he makes the play unassisted. One away. Harry Hooper. Wood made a bid to get a base hit, but a good play by Smokey Joe. Here's the pitch to Hooper, or by uh, Merkel at first. 1 6 is a 28. Ground ball to the shortstop. Or Fletcher throws out Harry Hooper. Two away, and now Steven Yerkes. 34 is a fly ball to center field. So another three up and three down for the Red Sox. We go to the top of the seventh. New York five, Boston one. Smokey Joe Wood returns to the mound. He is his highest rated pitcher in APA as you can be. A and B, X, Y, strikeout modifier, Z, control modifier. I suppose he could be an A, B, Z, Z and be the highest possible rating, but <laughs> pretty close. Josh DeVore leads off for the Giants in the top of the seventh. 55 is a nine. That's a ground ball to shortstop. Heine Wagner makes the play. One out. DeVore is one for four in this game. Here is Larry Doyle. Doyle's one for three with a double and run score. 45 is a base on balls. F-17 stealing. A four-run lead. I think he'll hold tight. Here is Fred Snodgrass. 36. 12. Ground ball to the pitcher Wood. He twirls and throws the second. Uh, Wagner takes that throw and throws to Stahl at first to complete the double play. It's a 1-6-3 inning ending double play. We go to the bottom of the seventh. 5-1 to one, New York. Hall of Famer Tris Speaker leads off for the Red Sox in the bottom of the seventh. They need base runners. are down by four runs. 6-6 six, six roll. That's a hit column roll for Speaker. And he, they're going to get a base runner. 45 is a double for Tris Speaker. Only the second hit off Christy Matthewson. Both were doubles. They had one other runner that reached by air. But Speaker is only the third base runner for the Red Sox. Brings up Duffy Lewis. There'll be no sacrifices here. Down by four runs. We got to limber up those bats. Here's the pitch to Lewis. 31 is a 9. 28 play result that they ground out the shortstop. The slow roller to Fletcher. Speaker will be able to go to third, and he goes to third with one out. Larry Gardner. Larry Gardner was just a championship type player. He played on some champions with the Red Sox. Also turned up with the 1920 Cleveland Indians and was on that World Series championship team. One out. The infield is playing back. Here's the pitch to Larry Gardner. 61 is a 24. With the runner on third. A slow roller to Buck Herzog at third. Speaker is trying to score. Here's a throw home. He is out at home. Speaker took a risk and makes the second out of the inning at home plate. I think he'd want to rethink that one. Fielder's choice. Larry Gardner's at first base with two outs. Here is Jake Stahl. Swinging butt towards second base. Here's a throw by Larry Doyle. Too late. Jake Stahl reaches on an infield hit. Swinging butt towards second base. And now the Red Sox have runners at first and third with two outs. Heine Wagner. 274 hitter. Matthewson in the stretch. Here's the pitch. 6-6 six, six roll. That's going to be a hit column roll for Heine Wagner. 1-1 one, one is a drive. It might be. It could be. It is over the left field wall for a three-run Red Sox home run. 
puts them back in the game. Giants 5, Red Sox 4. And I am sure that Tris Speaker is just sick on the bench. This would be a tie game if he did not take that risk trying to score. Many congratulations for Wagner at home play, and Red Sox fans are going delirious, the ones that are here. I'm sure the Royal Rooters are sorry they boycotted this game. Hick Katie is due to bat. Five to four. Here's the pitch to Katie. Four four is a base hit off Christy Matthewson. For Hick Katie, and that puts the tying run at first. There are two outs. Here is Smokey Joe Wood with a chance to do something here to win this game. Pitch to Smokey Joe, 1-5 is an 8 against an A. I think that's going to be an out. It's a ground ball uh, or Y. Uh, it's got the Y modifier, so it's a strikeout. Smokey Joe Wood strikes out, and that's the end of the rally. But the Red Sox play three runs we go to the top of the eighth Giants five and the Red Sox four top of the eighth inning has the New York Giants seen red red Murray is the leadoff batter at the top of the eighth inning and red Ames is warming up in the Giants bullpen Christy Matthewson uh, has tired has reached his fatigue and is now a great B pitcher so there might be a change at the bottom of the inning Here's a pitch to Red Murray from Smokey Joe Wood, 53, 15. That's going to test the left fielder. All the Red Sox fielders are fielding column one. That's going to be a fly out. Duffy Lewis makes the play. Red Murray is 0 for 4. Fred Merkel comes to bat. 26 is a swing and a miss. Smokey Joe pours a fastball past Merkel, two outs. Buck Herzog. 65 is popped up behind home plate. Hit Katie, throws away the mask, and catches the ball back by the screen. Three up and three down for the Giants. We go to the bottom of the eighth. It's a one run ball game. All right, manager John McGraw does make the change. He brings out Matheson. And the new pitcher is Red Ames, 11-5, 2.46 ERA. He's a grade B pitcher, Y, and Z modifiers. Harry Hooper leads off the top of the order for the Red Sox in the eighth. They're down by one. 4-3 is a roller back to the pitcher, Ames. Throw to first. One away. Here's Yerkes. 3-3 three, three, roll. That's a base hit for Steven Yerkes, a 7 against a B. Single, Yerkes goes to first. He's fast. Let's check that steal rating. That's F26. Pretty good. All right, Red Ames is a 0 holding runners. Let's focus that in. And the catcher, uh, Meyer, let's see, Meyer, where is he? Myers is a... Throwing plus three to his favor at the bottom of the card. So take three off of F26, F23. Chances to be safe if he steals are 11 through 45. Trust Speaker is a batter. He's going to take the first pitch and let him try. There he goes. Here's the throw. 6-6, six, six. he is a dead duck. And Chief Myers, Hall of Fame catcher, throws out Steven Yerkes, trying to steal second base. 2-6, two, two outs, bases clear. And um, you know me, if you follow my games, I play aggressively. Wanted to get that runner in scoring position. Maybe I shouldn't have. There's a pitch to speaker. 63 is a fly ball to center field, caught by Fred Snodgrass. Three outs. We go to the top of the ninth. Giants still five, Red Sox four. The man of the moment for the New York Giants, Chief Myers, huge caught stealing in the bottom of the eighth inning. He will lead off for New York. 
Here's a pitch to Myers. 34 is a fly ball to center. Tris Speaker playing shallow goes back for it and makes the catch. One away. Nobody plays as shallow as Tris Speaker, sometimes referred to as a fifth infielder. Art Fletcher, the first stop. 55 is an 8 against an AB pitcher. That's a fly out to Speaker in center field. Two outs. Here's the pitcher, Red Ames. He's staying game and hit for himself. 45. Base on balls. Smokey Joe Wood walks the pitcher. Pitchers have contributed for the Giants in this game. Christy Matthewson got a two-run single. Now Ames is at first with two outs. Josh DeVore. 34 is a fly ball to center for Speaker. A busy ninth inning. He makes the catch. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Giants with a one-run lead to protect, 5-4. to four. All right, before we roll the last of the ninth, forgive me, I'm going to digress here. This is where the iconic moment number three that we're focusing on happened. Uh, it was actually the 10th inning. The game was, the actual game was, the score was tied. And the Red Sox were coming up in the bottom of the 10th inning. The first batter was Tris Speaker, who hit a routine fly ball to center field. It was muffed by Fred Snodgrass. And that error put uh, the the runner at first, excuse me, that was uh, Engel was the batter pinch hitting for Smokey Joe Wood. Uh, speaker wasn't up yet. But that air opened up the door for the Red Sox to eventually score. There was a walk and a single that load the bases with one out. Uh, the final play was a sacrifice fly ball by uh, Larry Gardner to drive in the game-winning run in the bottom of the 10th inning and deny Christy Mathewson his second World Series victory. They were, they were the uh, 1912 Giants were in the midst of three straight World Series appearances, 1911, 12, and 13. They lost all three of those. And that error by Fred Snodgrass is known as the $30,000 error because the winning shares for the teams in the 12 World Series was $29,514.34. All right, let's get back to the action. Duffy Lewis steps into the box for the Red Sox. Fred Snodgrass has not had a great day. He hasn't made an error. But offensively, the Giants center fielder has struck out, failed to sacrifice play rolled out to the pitcher, and rolled into a double play. So it's been a miserable day for Fred Snodgrass without the air. Red Ames is still on the mound for the Giants. Here's the windup. Here's the pitch to Duffy Lewis. Two, four is a swing and a miss. Strike three. Red Ames has crossed that first hurdle. One out. Two to go. Here is Larry Gardner. Strong hitting third baseman for the Red Sox. 315 hitter. Wind up and the pitch. 21's a fly ball to the left field. Red Murray will get it. He puts it away. Two down. One out to go for the Giants to win the World Series. Here is Jake Stahl, the player manager. Stahl is one for three. Singles and score. Here's the pitch. 21. Fly ball. Right field. Josh DeVore will get it. He puts it away. And the New York Giants win the 1912 World Series and reverse history with a one-run victory. The Giants 5, Red Sox 4. We'll be back with the wrap-up. All right, a terrific rally by the Boston Red Sox in the bottom of the eighth inning falls one run short on a questionable decision by Tris Speaker to try to score on a ground out to third base. Had he stayed at third, they would have tied the game when Honey Wagner hit, hit his home run. I said the eighth inning, bottom of the seventh inning. Um, but that's what, that's baseball. It hangs on small details like that. Just speaker, if he had it to do over again, he would not have tried to score that run. The Giants scored five runs on seven hits and one error. Red Sox had four runs on six hits, and they committed one error. 
In the actual 1912 World Series, Christy Mathewson in his book said that um, the team collapsed under the strain of the pressure, but he also cited the errors that New York made that really cost them the series. Uh, they had, I think, five errors in game two that led to several unearned runs and uh, two critical errors in game eight, especially the one by Snod Snodgrass. In this series, that we, in this game that we played, it was the error by second baseman Steven Yurtz in the sixth inning that allowed the two winning runs to score for the New York Giants. Those runs were unearned. Uh, there were two outs in the inning, and it was actually an error that led to the loss for the Boston Red Sox. One home run in the game that was hit by Heine Wagner, the big three-run home run in the seventh for Paul Boston just within an eyelash of the New York Giants. Winning pitcher was Christy Mathewson. Actually lost a couple games, but he pitched well in the 1912 World Series. Uh, his ERA was under one. In this game, he had he was sailing along with on a one hitter until the seventh inning. He pitched seven innings, gave up four earned runs. And the losing pitcher is Hugh Bedian. Five and two thirds innings pitched and three innings, three, three earned runs. Red Ames and Smokey Joe Wood provided tremendous relief for each team. Ames with two innings, no runs, gets the save. Smokey Joe Wood, three and a third innings, and he allowed no earned runs. Today's star of the game is Christy Mathewson. Um, as I said, he was throwing a one-hitter through six innings, stumbled in the seventh, and needed relief from Red Ames. But Christy Mathewson with the win is the star of the game. Hope you enjoyed this. We're going to continue with the 50 iconic uh, moments in baseball history. Uh, the next game will be Monday. Not sure which iconic moment that will be, but it will be a good one. They're all good, and when we replay them on the tabletop, the games don't always uh, turn out as they did in actuality, but they are realistic. And, uh, you know, we kind of have to catch lightning in a bottle to get a game to turn out exactly the way the iconic moments did. Did that one time last year in the third game of the 1951 playoffs. That's why not kind of moment I will never replay because it's not going to get better than that game was. That's up on the channel if you want to look it up. The shot her around the world by Bobby Thompson. That's one of the 50 iconic moments we're not going to replay. I'm thinking of the next one. Um, there's several that I'm thinking of, but it might be the 1960 World Series, and I might use Stratomatic to play Game 7. Uh, I'm not going to replay the whole series, but if we go with that one next, it'll just be the Game 7. Thanks for watching. Have a good day, and may God bless.